Hello, Internet people. It's Lloyd from Historic Outdoors. We're in my office. And today, it's mail day. I even said thank you. So I've been thinking for a bit. I got this rifle. And uh, I put a scope on it, which works quite well. I like it. And it's one of those uh, scopes that you can dial from uh, one power to four power or four and a half power or something like that. And it's got the typical uh, eye relief issues that magnified optics do. And your head's got to be in the right place at the right time. So while it's accurate, it uh, does take a little bit of time to acquire a sight picture. So I thought I'd conduct an experiment and put a Burris Fast Fire 3 on top of that. So that's what I'm going to do today. So let's see what's in the box. Now it could be said, it should be said, it's kind of silly to stack optics on a bolt action. That's the kind of thing that you'd want to do on a semi-automatic gun. Here in Canada, semi-automatic guns are becoming more and more rare. And uh, my little carbine is designed for hunting in black spruce like we have here where you might have to make a snapshot pretty quickly. So that's what this should uh, do. Maybe. I don't know. It's going to be a couple hundred dollar experiment. But I don't have a wife and I don't have a bunch of kids and I don't have a bunch of bills and I don't have a drug addiction. But I do like to buy neat things from time to time and I like to shoot things paper targets and steel targets and such. So this thing is just absolutely tiny, which is why I bought it. You don't want to put a giant optic on top of another giant optic. And there's a lot of plastic and foam here in the box until you find Owner's manual. Look at that. User guide, I guess they call it. Oh, and it comes with a little thing to clean your optic. And I haven't got my glasses, so I guess I'll read this later. But I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. And it says that this has got a forever warranty. And it looks like it's got some kind of cover thing that goes over it. Well, that's kind of neat. I don't know if you use it with uh, that on it or if you just leave that on it uh, when it's not in use, but I guess we'll find out. And look at that. They've even sent me a little screwdriver. Well, that's kind of neat. A little flathead screwdriver. And then there's a base here or what? Well, I guess we'll find out. I'm guessing this base is if you want to put it on a regular Picatinny mount. So that comes with it. And there's some screws in the in the foam here. So we got the screws in the foam. What's this silver thing? Well, that appears to be the battery. So. Unlike some toys, batteries are included. So we got some screws, we got a battery, we got a Burris Fast Fire 3, um, I think that's what it is, Fast Fire 3. We got some kind of cover thing that goes over the Burris Fast Fire 3, a mount to put it on a Picatinny rail, and a cleaning cloth, and a little waste screwdriver. And your owner's manual. And that's what comes in the Burris Fast Fire 3. But because I'm going to stack this on top of an optic and make it look really goofy, 
I'm not going to be using this, so I bought something else to go with this. And this was a little bit cheaper, but I, guess I don't need my knife to get into this box. But when all said and done, this still ends up being, uh, oh, about a hundred dollar purchase, tax on top of that, about a four hundred dollar purchase for the, so anyway, when all said and done, this is about a five hundred dollar experiment to see if this is something I like. And this is a mount, and your scope tube goes in there, and this sits on top of your scope, and then this thing sits on top of the scope mount, kind of like that, but I guess we'll figure it out. And in this, you get an Allen key, so that's good, add that to my Allen key collection. And then there's a bunch of screws, and I don't know if those screws are different from these screws, but we've got screws, so we'll make something work. And I guess that's taped in there, so it doesn't fall out. Oh, there we go. Got that out. So now, with all of these tools, let's see if we can do something. Uh, yeah, there's my invoice from Tenda. And there's nothing else in that box. So, this is uh, what 500 and some dollars Canadian looks like. But like I say, no drug addiction, nothing to spend my money on. So, you know, might as well buy some stuff every now and again. So, um, I'm going to read about this off camera, learn how to put it together, and then I'll bring the camera in and show you what I've done. Okay, on closer inspection, I found another Allen key. I think it's a Torx Allen key in the in the foam thing. But we got the battery compartment off, and it's got really fine threads, and they don't like to engage going back in. Um, so we'll put the battery in the hole, and we'll put the manhole cover back in, and we'll take our flathead screwdriver. I'll put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Take our flathead screwdriver, put that in the slot, and try to get those threads to evenly engage, which they don't really want to do for some reason. Keeps wobbling around. So this is a bit of a pain in the arse a few moments later okay well let's turn it on all right so now the battery is in it's tested it's turned on and there seems to be a couple of brightness settings. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to put this sight on this base. It seems pretty simple. You sit it on like so and then put a couple of screws in it. And that's all there is to it. So these are the screws that came with the base. And these are the screws that came with the Burris Fast Fire for screwing it into this Picatinny base. And uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that these screws that work with this base will not work with this base. So I'll put that in there and we'll put it away in case I ever decide that this experiment was a failure. And I'm going to put this on something else. So, we'll open those up like so, and it's got a couple of lock washers, 
and uh, basically no instructions came with this so I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of blue Loctite on these screws even though you probably don't need to with these lock washers but two is one one is none as they say those lock washers into place, kind of, sort of. And then, drop the screw in there. Allen key and screw that bugger into place. And I can feel it kind of biting in. So we'll put the other one in place. Oh, dropping my Allen key here. So I'm going to assume that those little uh, thread locking screws, um, lock washers, whatever they are, are kind of a one-use deal similar to crush washers. When you're putting on a muzzle device. Alright, that's kind of starting to bite into that base. Just get a finger tight, finger tight in the other one. If you were some fancy gunsmith guy and you had a hundred dollar screwdriver set that could torque this to the appropriate amount of inch pounds required, um, that would probably be a good thing. But all I'm doing is making this finger tight on both sides to an equal amount of tension. And then once I've got that equal amount of tension, I'm going to switch over here and I'm just going to give that a quarter turn to snug it. And that should be enough to keep that little 3MOA dot from moving around, especially with a drop or two of Loctite in there. So here we are, um, fully installed. Put some Loctite on those screws put that mount on top of the scope which is a Burris Fast Fire 3 and this here is a Bushnell banner which is probably not a good scope for walking around in the rain but it does everything that I wanted to do and my main concern was um, this rifle's got a really really interesting bolt throw and I had to make sure that it was going to clear which it does but uh, if you're trying to run it fast, you might run your knuckles uh, into this because these are really, really, really low scope mounts. But we'll see when we take it out of the range. But that is what it looks like when it is installed. How functional it is remains to be seen. So today we're testing out the Burris Fast Fire, which is stacked on top of this scope. Uh, this is the 3MOA dot, which they recommend for putting on rifles. Um, the theory being that the scope is good for longer ranges, and if you're hunting in the black spruce in black fly country like we got today, uh, this is pretty good for 50, 60 yards. So uh, we're going to test it out on the on the CZ rifle and 
and uh, see what kind of times we get. And today we're shooting uh, Rug or Raug, uh, not sure how you pronounce it, uh, Hungarian Ammo Tech Incorporated 7.62x39. Um, it's a brass cased ammo that uh, this rifle quite likes. So I'm going to shoot five rounds uh, using the scope and see what my time is on each shot. And then I'm going to shoot uh, five rounds with the red dot and see if it's any faster. And uh, we'll see what we'll see. So, the back of the envelope says that we had uh, one shot at 6.01, another at 6.08, another at 4.65, another at 3.98, and another at 2.47. So that's what I can do with the scope. Um, I'm sure that if you practice with your scope more, you get even better than that, but now we're going to see what you can do with the red dot. So with the red dot, the back of the envelope says that I got one shot off at 2.33, one at 3.3, one at 3.1, one at 2.42, and one at 2.33. So it seems like it's faster. Um, when I averaged the five shots with the scope, it came out to 4.638. And when I averaged the shots with the red dot, um, it came out at 2.696. So, uh, the red dot is, uh, on average, uh, about two seconds faster, um, and two seconds might be the difference between getting your deer and your deer getting off into the woods and getting to do deer things for another day. So I don't know if the stacked optic uh, is a gimmick or uh, if it's real, but uh, I bet if I were to take that scope off and put the red dot uh, a bit lower, it'd be easier to pick up and it would be even faster. So, uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to have both. Uh, it might be a bit of a gimmick. Um, maybe there's, a, you know, army guy applications for having stack, stacked optics, but uh, or maybe there is for competition too. But uh, I think as a hunter, uh, choose one or choose the other. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you have a different opinion. So uh, anyway, what I saw, even with the stacked optic, uh, you know, the red dot on top of the scope, it was, you know, quite a bit faster. But uh, I had one good shot with the scope, which was, uh, you know, pretty fast, uh, 2.47. So, you know, maybe a scope's going to do everything that you need, and you don't need the red dot. Either way, red dots are an interesting uh, piece of technology. Uh, they're definitely uh, moving things forward into the future. And uh, I would say pretty soon uh, everybody's going to have them. So uh, maybe there's a scope out there that, uh, you know, it's got the red dot built into it. Uh, and it's parallax free and you push a button. I don't know. But uh, anyway, for my money, um, I like the I like the Burris Fastfire. It's a, it's a good, uh, good little rig. Um, I was ringing the steel down there at 55 uh, meters with it. Uh, pretty easily. I missed uh, once or twice, but I cut those out because you know that's what you do. Uh, what can what can I say? Uh, first Fastfire three, three MOA optic for uh, rifles. Um, gonna give it an eight out of ten. Um, it's definitely better than irons. Um, so if you're a dedicated uh, woods hunter and you got short sight lines, uh, not a bad uh, not a bad piece of kit. But if you're uh, out in the open fields. Uh, I think the scope is far superior, especially if you've got time and the animals don't know you're there. But if you're in the woods and uh, the deer's gonna surprise you and you're gonna surprise it, uh, red dot, pretty good piece of equipment. So uh, 
I'm going to try to get out of these black flies and uh, go home for the day. So there you have it. Another fun trip to the range with the uh, Burris Fast Fire 3. Um, works pretty good. I was impressed with it. Um, probably worked even better on other guns. Uh, I guess uh, it's a, got a got a sister optic which is 6 MOA that you can put on pistols. A little easier to pick up at close range but uh, I don't know. For my purposes this works pretty good. I think it would work really really good on my 9mm carbine. I think it would work pretty good on uh, just about anything you, you put it on. And uh, in this configuration I'm not a hundred percent convinced uh, that I need it. Um, but it was a fun experiment. So uh, anyway that's all I got for today. Um, if you like the channel, uh, feel free to subscribe. If you like the video, uh, hit the hit the like button. Do all the things. We're at all the places. We're on Rumble, which is like the Canadian version of YouTube. Uh, we're on the we're on the Twitter now. Um, we're on the locals. We're on a bunch of stuff. So anyway, uh, feel free to find us uh, wherever you can. And as always, if you don't like the video, share it with your enemies. I will punish them for free.